Welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie, episode 220. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, from thepaperpixie.com. As you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from, I'm gonna say hello to a few of you in the comments. Hi Judy, Paula, Tanya, Amy, hi Wanda, hi Kathy, Tilly, Kimberly, Tracy, Ree, hello, hi Andrea, Renee, Ava, Welcome and thank you for the flexibility and rescheduling. It has been a crazy busy schedule for me this week. Um, so I just needed an extra night, but I have got five gift card holders we're going to share. I'm going to share with you tonight. So in case, well, we all have oppor we all have reasons to give gift cards at the last minute. So hopefully you'll take away at least one good idea that may help you in your holiday gifting this season. So five gift card holders. We'll do that in a few moments. Hello, hi Charlotte, Rosina, Callie Girl, Kathy, Cindy, welcome. You guys are awesome. All right, a couple of housekeeping things. My host code for the month is UM3ARQKW. If you use my shopping link, the paperpixie.com slash shop, the host code will auto automatically apply for you, save you a little bit of time there. I've got three free gifts to choose from for orders of $50 or more, the Real Red Double Stitched, sat double stitched Satin Ribbon, which I'm, jo I'm laughing about because I don't have that. I was looking for it for a project tonight. The Red Rhinestone Basic Jewels and a combo pack of Stampin' Dimensionals that will come with a pack of mini dimensionals and a pack of regular dimensionals. If you don't already have a demonstrator and you'd like complimentary copies of our current catalogs, I'm also gonna be getting the new mini catalog and celebration brochure they're scheduled to arrive to me on Tuesday. Brian and I will turn those around and get them out to my customers who've ordered with me in the last six months. Uh, but if you would like to request complimentary copies, just visit thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. And I think that is it for housekeeping other than you guys loved the free shipping sale. As you know, Stampin' Up! doesn't do that very often. So that was what happened yesterday. That's part of what made yesterday super crazy. I took advantage of the free shipping myself as well. There are still opportunities to get some items at a discount with the last chance product sale. There's items up to 50% off. You can see that in the categories on stampinup.com as well as the clearance rack. There's still some great stuff on the clearance rack. And don't forget with the last chance list, those items are while supplies last. Those are items from the outgoing mini catalog that will be retired as of January 3rd. So there are some products that are carrying over. Some of them you'll be able to purchase up through um, the beginning of May. And some of them will take a little hibernation break and come back in the mini catalog, the July to December 2022 mini catalog. I have all those details on my blog if you want to take a look at that. And I'll, as always, you can reach out with questions. I am going to flip my camera. I've got some show and tell from the kids. Two totally different sizes of show and tell. I'm hearing... What's... What? Okay, Daddy can help you, okay? <laughs> um, I was going to say, Brian is watching for your comments, but he's going to go help out Nolan. And let me flip the camera here. I am doing a sneak peek, Carla. Thank you for asking that. The sneak peek is going to be on... Sunday night. Okay, I needed some time there. Um, so we'll I'll do that Sunday night. So watch out for um, the schedule for that Sunday evening, 8pm Eastern time, we'll do a walkthrough of a sneak peek of products from the upcoming January to June 2022 mini catalog. Okay. All right. Nolan, as you know, Lego obsessed, he's been working on this the last few days. I'm not sure I can show you all of it. But we ordered him, I think we talked about this last week, we got these platforms for them so they could just build whatever they wanted. So I think Santa's gonna be getting a few more Lego sets for him. Yes, I am doing product shares, Cindy. I'll pop that up on the screen really quick. Product shares I will announce on Sunday during the product sneak peek, as well as I will get an email out to those of you who have participated with me before or you requested to be added to my uh, mailing list for that. If you want to get an email about that, just visit the paperpixie.com slash shares and you'll be able to put your name and email address in there and you'll get notified as soon as I announce that. Okay. 
And then Lily just wanted to show you a necklace she made. They do after school with the YMCA, so they had some fun putting together beads. I had a couple other necklaces. Nolan made one, and Lily made another one, but this is the only one that I could find. So there's that. That's what she wanted to show you. My kids are six and all oh, eight and three quarters, and so they always, if you're new to my live stream, they always pick a show and tell for that. All right. How about we jump into gift card holder number one? I think the way we're gonna do this is I'm just going to build it on the fly and then you'll see the finished result. So hopefully that will be kind of fun for you. Yes, I see Master Lego. Um, the ornament I made a month or so ago. Oops, did I show the wrong one? Did I make an ornament a month ago? It takes, hmm, Ava, tell me more about that. I can't think of, did I make an ornament? I'm not remembering. It's possible it's an old video, but let me know. Give me more details. All right. This one is a pop-up gift card holder. So we're going to start with a piece of basic white. This is the thick basic white that measures four and a quarter by 11. I've scored it in half at five and a half. This is going to be crazy for me to do five projects. We're going to do them quick. These are quick and easy gift card holders because that's how I roll. So folded that in half. Then I've got a piece. Well, let's work on the inside part. I'm going to start with a piece that is four and a quarter by six. Now, if you wanted to conserve your paper, you can get away doing this with a four inch by six inch piece but you're gonna have to be really careful with where you put the glue so that you can fit the gift card. So this comes from the Painted Christmas Designer Series paper. This is going to be carrying over to the next, I, I can't remember this, but I'm pretty sure it's carrying over to the next mini catalog. I think this might be one of the hibernation products. Let me see if I can figure that one out. Yes, that's going to be a hibernation product. <laughs> okay, so let me grab the Simply Scored. All right, so again, four and a quarter by six. You can get away with four by six, but I liked the little bit of, le of Lego room. <laughs> of leg room. Can you tell I have Legos on the brain? All right, so I'm going to score this. I've got my notes here. Let me put these to the side. All right, a bunch of score lines, but I'm going to show you how to do this now. This is not a new style. You're going to notice it's going to look familiar to many of you. Um, I cannot remember who was the original demonstrator. This is a totally pixie pixified version. So we're going to do half of an inch, one and a quarter, one and three quarters, two and a half, three and a half, four and a quarter, four and three quarters, and five and a half. Let me repeat those. I know that's a lot. This is to avoid having to do two pieces of paper. So one half, one and a quarter, one and three quarters, two and a half, three and a half, four and a quarter, four and three quarters, five and a half. Okay. No, it's just, well, it's a catalog to catalog carryover. I just call it hibernation because the products will not be available starting January 4th for a period of time until July 1st. So they are holiday products, so you probably won't miss them while they hibernate. But, And I'm just going to fold and burnish on all the score lines. Just work your way down. I created these over a series of days, and so hopefully I remember <laughs> how to make them all. Uh, sometimes when I move on from one project to the next, I just, I move on mentally, right? All right, so I'm going to line up tear and tape right along the edge, both edges of the short side. That's the four and a quarter inch side. We're going to do that for now, but we're going to bring the tear and tape back in a moment. Let me get my take your pick tool. I love this tool to get the backing off of our tear and tape. This is our double sided tape. Great for 3D projects when you don't want to get messy with liquid glue. And then we're essentially going to, I'm going to fold on the first score line and the first, second and third. Okay. I'm going to fold that one down and flat. 
I'm gonna repeat the same thing on the opposite side. So I'm folding on that first score line and third, and then just pressing flat. I do have to kind of make sure, I don't want those edges, let me pull this up one second because that didn't line up quite right. Usually you have a little bit of give with the tear and tape as I do this live. I should have dry fit it first. Essentially you don't want those folded edges to overlap at all. So you may just need to move some things just slightly. And then you can come in with your bone folder and just make sure that that is nice and flat. But see how we don't have any overlapping with those two folded edges. But those are just glued down. You might see where I'm going with this. Just like this. Now I've seen this project done a lot of times with two pieces like that. I think that this conserves a little bit of paper. And then the only thing we're going to do is we've got to adhere right on the edge because, let me grab the gift card, the gift card's going to fit right in the middle there. So if we take a little bit of tear and tape, you could use liquid glue as well, but I'm just going to put a little piece here. That's just to prevent the gift card from sliding out the side. Now, if you were going to do this four inches wide, you're going to want to use liquid glue, like a really thin bead there. Pull that backing off, and I'll show you, I should have left the backing on just to show you that gift card's going to fit right between those backings. Six and a quarter by ten and a half. Ava, I'm sorry, I'm not sure which ornament that is. So if you can shoot me an email, I know you've got my email address, um, and I will, I'm, I'll have to look through my archives to figure out which ornament you're talking about. So I'm just pinching these two together, just like that, and I can come in with my fingers and just press, okay? Now we've got our card base here. I'm going to adhere this right here. Now I'm just pressing it flat. We're going to do something like this. Okay, so see how we've folded that flat? There it is, all popped up, and then we're going to fold it flat. So if I, if I hold it this way, I'm folding it to the right. Does that make sense? So I'm going to do one side at a time here. Liquid glue is only going to go on this section up to the score line. So don't go past the score line. You're doing the folded edge here to the score line. And then I'm just going to slide that right up to that fold in the card and press down. Now because it's four and a quarter inches wide, that's going to fit right between the edges of our card. Then when I open this, it's going to be stuck to the top. We're going to do the same thing here, liquid glue, don't go past the score line. So from the edge that goes to the fold of the card up to the score line, like that, and then we're just going to fold it flat. Give that liquid glue a little bit of time to stick down. And then when we open it, look at that. So let's put our little gift card. It's going to slip right in between those two tear and tape sections. And if you kind of work it this way a little bit, I don't know if you can see this, but that will sit upright on the recipient's desk. You can write a little note to them. We are gonna do a little bit of stamping on the inside. I am using the Encircled in Warmth stamp set. This comes from the mini catalog. I'm obsessed with this one. So we're gonna use this on the front, but on the inside, we're gonna say, wishing you love, joy, and happiness this coming year. And I'm going to stamp that in the center of this top part so that they, the recipient will see it right above the gift card. Okay, so let me grab real red ink. Get that good and inked up. Uh, that was going to be upside down. Now, probably would have been helpful to do this before you glue, but I'm going to eyeball it here. Here's hoping. Yay! So I put my finger in the ink. I know I'm not the only one that does that. <laughs> All right, so that's the inside. Then you can see the gift card pops up. 
I don't even know if we've used this gift card. It's from ages ago for the AMC theaters, but that popcorn looks delish. <laughs> All right, so that's the inside. Now you've got plenty of space. Um, the way I've seen this gift card pop up is done in a landscape or sort of a long way where the card opens up this way. I did this a little bit narrower than what I've seen and then that leaves space here that you can write a note to the recipient. So there's that. Then I've got a piece from the Painted Christmas. I always have to check this Painted Christmas Designer Series paper, the same pattern we use for the inside. This piece measures three and three quarters by five. I'm gonna glue that here. And you will wanna stay on to the end. I see the chatter in the comments about Prize Patrol. I will do a random drawing for US participants for a free stamp set. So that's why you see my regulars putting hashtag prize patrol in the comments. You all only get one entry, so you only need to type it in once. So I just did liquid glue that piece down. And I know I cut, it's probably hiding somewhere. We're gonna cut it again if I can't find it. Yeah, let's cut it again. All right, so we need to do a piece that is three and three quarters by one inch. That was so good. I've got trays for every project. I'm all ready to go, which my husband will start laughing. is not normal for me, is it? All right, so one inch by three and three quarters. It's the fun part about live. I get to do stuff on the fly. So this piece, we're just gonna layer a little bit towards the bottom. Just gonna make the sentiment pop. But really the key to this project is that little insert on the inside. You could do that for any kind of project, a birthday card, an anniversary card, a wedding card, for Christmas just by changing up the paper. So we've got that. And then because I knew we were gonna do five projects tonight, I've done this ahead of time, but look at that pop of white on garden green. Again, this comes from Encircled in Warmth. Now two things you can use to cut out the circle. I think I pulled the other set of dies, but it's currently not orderable. The layering circles dies, if you have those, those will work perfectly with this sentiment. Or, believe it or not, the Encircled in Beauty dies, which coordinate with the Encircled in Warmth stamp set, this one on the back actually will cut a perfect circle. So I just used that. I didn't worry about all the flourish on the outside, but I got that to cut this out. And oh my gosh, do I love white heat embossing on a bold color like Garden Green. So for that, I'm just gonna use some dimensionals and this card, number one, will be finished. I, I like to go a little crazy with the dimensionals, especially if this is going to be mailed. It will not be too thick to mail, which I love. Got one more backing, I feel. There we go. You know me, I love clean, simple, and easy. A segment of the background of your, I bet that would be great for when I actually do my craft room tour. <laughs> But yes, I will definitely talk about that. And then for a little bit of bling, these are the wonderful gems. It's actually two packs of them um, loaded up into my little sleeve here. These last I checked are still available and they are 15 or 20% off. I want to say they're normally $8. They're $6 and 80 cents. So does that make 15% off? I think. So we're just going to do a little trio because I love trios with uh, embellishments. gonna do it that way this time what did I do on the other one another big one and I love these because they've got a little bit of shimmer to them I don't know if the camera there's a little you can see a little bit of the shimmer but that is gift card holder number one space to write a sentiment love that all right let's move on to gift card holder number two <laughs> Judy I see your comment something else you need to order um, all right so that's number one I think I need the red again. 
put this back there. I'm gonna need that again. All right, number two. This is a quick and easy card. And if anybody from my team is watching, they might recognize this card if it's made its way to them in the mail. <laughs> this is another quick and easy gift card holder. Like real easy. Great for using up scraps. So we're gonna do again. I'm doing three card gift card holders and then two that are a little bit more three-dimensional, kind of three-dimensional. They're like pockets for gift cards. So that's what's coming up. This again is four and a quarter by 11, thick basic white, scored and folded in half at five and a half. I have got my notes somewhere maybe. Which paper is this? This is the Sweet Little Stockings. Sweet Stockings Designer Series paper. I believe this whole suite is still available. It is retiring. Let's see. Link on specifically for Judy, which product? Let me know, okay? All right, so this measures one, oh, I gotta measure it. One and a quarter by four, I believe. No, one and a half by four. This piece measures three quarters by four. And this is the gold foil, which is, and I'm pretty sure this is still a current product. I'm questioning myself now. This is one quarter of an inch by four. So we're gonna layer these. This one will go together super fast. This one I'm gonna line up going up the edge here. Like so, again, that liquid glue gives me some wiggle room to get that just right. Then we'll come in with the cherry cobbler pattern. I feel bad putting glue on the golden retriever's face. This paper is so cute. And we have a golden retriever, so I'm partial to it. And this one I'm just gonna do perpendicular. Now you have about an eighth of an inch of the basic white peeking from behind it. And then just a thin strip of glue right down the center of this strip. And I'm gonna butt that up against this cherry cobbler piece for a nice little pop of bling as I get glue on my finger. Oh, the link for the clear envelopes. Yes, those are on my favorites page, the paperpixie.com slash favorites. They are a, um, Avery passport holders. I think they come in a pack of 10. All right, so I stamped this. I'm talking while I'm not sharing with you. Love the stamp set, Holly Jolly Wishes, and I love the sentiment, Jingle All the Way. We're also gonna stamp Have a Holly Jolly Christmas in the inside, and I die cut the Have a Holly Jolly, or Jingle All the Way, from this, from the Tasteful Labels dies. It's this piece here, and I love this because it not only cuts, but it also gives you a really cool dry embossed edge. How awesome is that? Get that out of the way. I'm gonna pop that up, sort of centering it over those horizontal strips. And then we needed a little something more. And while the dies are discontinued or sold out, the stamp set is not, but I love the sparkle of the season and stars are my favorite. So we're gonna grab this trio of stars and I'm gonna stamp that in Bumblebee. So Bumblebee ink. And just over here in the upper right corner of that label. Super cute, simple, with that little pop of bling with the gold foil. Now on the inside, I've got a piece of regular basic white cardstock, not the thick, and this piece measures four inches by five and a quarter. I'm gonna bring in the, now you've seen me do this before, and I gotta give a shout out to Jackie Bullheis for the idea. The tailored tag punch. This is gonna be the magic to turn this card into a gift card holder, or really any card. I am pressing that layer so it's in portrait, centering it left to right of the punch, but I'm pushing it all the way in so it doesn't go any further. And I'm gonna punch. You can save that piece for another project. And then we've got the Have a Holly Jolly Christmas. I'm gonna stamp that in Cherry Cobbler. But we're gonna do this towards the top 
because we want to make sure that there's going to be room for the gift card. So let's do that. My cherry cobbler ink pad has given me troubles. So hopefully we get a clean stamp. Pardon my head. There we go. Have a holly jolly Christmas. Probably put that out of the way. Let me get liquid glue. Now here's the key. We want to put a thin bead down here and on either side. Actually, it doesn't matter on either side. The thin bead needs to be kind of close to the edge down here because we want to have a little bit of room for the gift card to slip in and that's not a thin bead. Goodness, Julie. What's that meme? I'm not talking to myself. I'm having a team meeting. <laughs> oh, goodness. I know you all talk to yourselves when you craft, just like me. The dimensions of the tailored tag opening. I will measure that in just a moment, Kimberly. I'm gonna line that up, try not to smear my stamp. The tailored tag, the width of it is two and five sixteenths wide, and then point to point about one and a half. So I'm going to grab a gift card and that's just going to slip right into the pocket. Whoops, I forgot to press down from the bottom. <laughs> Make sure that's adhered. And look at that, you've turned a card into a gift card holder. Super quick and easy. <coughs> This would be fun to make a whole bunch of, of pro, a whole bunch of these multiples, and then you got a whole bunch of gift card holders ready to go. So gift card holder number two. Let's move on to number three. We've got another card going on here. This I already have a video tutorial for, and I want to give a shout out to my dear friend Jackie Beers because I originally got the idea from her, and I think this tutorial is from 2017. I will be sure to make sure I will be sure to make sure that you have uh, a link to that. Let me get all my pieces and parts. So Carla, what I have experienced sometimes with the greens and the reds is a very is a similar thing. Those colors tend to um, crystallize. I think it's the ink. There's something about those two ink colors. I, it's mostly happening with my darker reds and my darker greens. So that could be what you're running into. I do have to re-ink them more often. But I don't have an answer for that. Um, Carrie Ann, good question. So I will not have a blog post tomorrow. This week has just been way too insane work-wise and schedule-wise. So these will start to post to my blog next week. So anticipate one per day, Monday through Friday next week. That's what I'm going to try to commit to. Um, and that will have all the dimensions. You can always watch the replay if you can't wait until Monday. So um, the replay will always be available for you to grab those dimensions. But I know you all love the blog posts because you can get sh you know short and sweet, right to the point with measurements and et cetera. They will not all have, vid have video tutorials, but I'll likely do some photo tutorials for some of them. So stay tuned. All right, so I've got real red cardstock. This measures again, four and a quarter by 11. And I'm gonna score this at two and a half and five and a half. Simple as that, two and a half and five and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and fold and burnish on those score lines. So it's gonna start to go together like this. This is a gift card fancy fold for you. I've got pieces of the Gingerbread and Peppermint Designer Series paper. I started with a four inch by six inch piece and I cut it to two and three quarters. So four by two and three quarters, four by two and one quarter, and then you're left with a one inch piece. And those are the pieces you need for this project. I've also got a piece of basic white that measures four inches by five and a quarter. I'm gonna go ahead and adhere that to the inside now. Now 
And I'm going to take that one inch piece and we're going to adhere that right to this right edge here. All right, so then the smaller of the two pieces that remain, we're gonna glue one there and then glue one there, okay? I love this pattern paper and I believe this paper is still available even though it is retiring. It's a six by six. You probably couldn't hear it on the camera. Brian was clearing his throat, letting Lily know it's time to stop reading and go to bed. <laughs> All right, so we've done that on either side of that score line. Now, because our one inch circle punch has been retired, I bought one because I sold mine <laughs> instead of saving it. So I just bought one on Amazon. But I'm gonna take a one inch circle punch. You can use what you have. And I'm gonna come in a little more than a third of the way and punch out a little finger notch there, okay? Now, on the back side of this, we're gonna take tear and tape, and I like to use my um, metal ruler for this just to tear the tear and tape so we get a really nice torn edge there. So I'm gonna line this up right up to the edge and tear. I'll show you closer to the camera in a minute. All right, so we did the tear and tape only up to that score line, but right on the edge there. So bringing in the take your pick tool. I love this gift card holder because it's the same uh, cardstock base size as a normal A2 card. And we're just gonna fold that down and press into place. I went through my stash of used gift cards. So we got a little pure one gift card for this one. That's going to slide right into the pocket. I just slide it. It'll go a little bit further than the edge, but I only slide it to the edge. The recipient can just get their hand in there and or their fingers in there and pull that out. So this is how it's going to go together. And we're going to put a, a decorative piece on the front using the Peaceful Deer Bundle, which is back in stock. <laughs> and that is not retiring, so you can still get your hands on it. All right. So I've got two pieces of cardstock. We've got Cherry Cobbler, looking at my notes here, or Cherry Cobbler, Real Red that measures two and three quarters by four, and Basic White that is two and a half by three and three quarters. Those are gonna layer just like that. We're gonna do a little bit of stamping first. I'm bringing in a piece of the small grid paper here. It's intended for the Stamparatus, but it's great for little projects like this. We're gonna be using the Peaceful Deer Bundle. Love the Deer Builder Punch so much. Okay, and we're going to stamp the trees first in Old Olive. Let's see if I can get those. I've got three tree stamps from the set. Old Olive, now all three of these have little landscape edges to it. I decided to not include those um, when I stamped, so let's go ahead and ink up the big tree. And I'm just gonna go from largest to smallest, but I'm lining up, make sure I got good ink coverage there, lining this up without the landscape, the landscape, or I should say the base, is gonna stamp on my scrap paper. So I got the trunk just starting right there. And it's okay that I've got a little bit of variation with the way that that inked up and stamped. Um, it's going to dry a little bit less noticeable. And then, is the trio next? I've got a trio of trees and then a pair of trees. And I'm going to do the same thing, just overlapping just a little bit. You get a little bit of darker texture where those trees overlap. And then finally, one more pair. Just to give a little landscape there. Let's see. Ah, 
I'm gonna grab the sentiment and this is the one I'm using a real red on. You can see my real red is a little bit a little bit crystallized. This one inks up better than my cherry cobbler. I'm gonna do this in the upper right. Sending love and peace this season. And because we gotta make room for our deer, that's what we're working towards here. I've got a scrap piece of basic white. We're gonna stamp the deer that says, oh, what fun on his body. I love this deer in early espresso. Make sure I got good ink coverage there. Beautimus. <laughs> I forget who used to say that. Grabbing the Deer Builder Punch. Take your time with this and make sure you're lining everything up, all of his hooves, his ears, his nose. Punch, you're gonna get a couple other, the antlers are gonna pop out as well, some antler confetti. Noisy and making a mess here. All right, so we're gonna pop this up on dimensionals. So cute, but see, he's, he says, oh, what fun. So the mini dimensional I'm just gonna put behind his head and then just two of the regular dimensionals. Again, this is one of my free gifts with orders of 50 or more. You get a pack of minis and a pack of regulars. I'm gonna pop this up on the front. Oh, I'm ahead of myself. <laughs> Let's go ahead and adhere this down first. So this will go onto the real red. I'm gonna pop my reindeer. Well, it's a deer, but we're gonna turn it into <coughs> Rudolph. I know I'm not gonna add the <coughs> antlers, but we can still say that it's Rudolph. And I'm gonna grab, this is another one of my free gifts, which I think is on low inventory. <laughs> Hopefully that's not a problem with the free gifts. But these are the red rhinestone basic jewels. I'm just gonna grab one and stick it right on his nose. All right, and then we are gonna glue this right to the front. Look how cool that looks. So here's my tip here. Um, you want to make sure that you're only, I'm gonna flip it this way, putting glue on this half. So it's gonna be the left half, but when you flip it, it's the right half. So kind of start in the middle, but don't go past that middle point and then you'll be safe, okay? So liquid glue there. Because it's liquid glue, we can come in and slide this into place. My sample was a little crooked, so I'm gonna get that lined up as I mess up his ear. It's all right, it gives him some dimension. And there is gift card holder number three, a fancy fold gift card holder. Lots of space for you to write a sentiment or a note to the recipient, but I love that little bouncy, happy, jolly reindeer or Rudolph. <laughs> Sending love and peace this season. Love that pop of plaid. All right, let's move on to number four. I don't remember if I need any of this stuff yet. Now Brian will work his magic with the replay and put chapters in for you. I'm just gonna step and do it this way. Thank you though. Um, he'll put chapters in so you can jump right to those. We'll probably get that done in the next day or two. Right? Sounds reasonable. All right, the next one. This one is a gift card pocket. And you'll be able to get three of these out of a sheet of eight and a half by 11. This piece measures three and a quarter by eight and a half. Okay. and we are gonna score this at two and a quarter from each side on the long side. So, 
On Sunday, it'll be at 8 o'clock p.m., and that will be just a new product sneak peek, okay? So two and a quarter, rotate, two and a quarter. Easy peasy, okay? So three and a half by eight and a half. You can get three of these out of an eight and a half by 11. I'm gonna score it at two and a quarter from each side on the long side. Fold and burnish. These would be great for, I know you guys have probably already done your craft fairs, but this would be, this would be a great craft fair project. I'm gonna round the corners of two of them. Pick whichever one's gonna be your top. Round the corner like so. Then we've got designer series paper and this comes from the sweet stockings. I love these little light Christmas light bulbs. So I'm gonna, it's two pieces that measure two inches by three inches. I'm gonna round. Now if it were directional, I always like to call this out, you want your paper to be in landscape. And top to bottom, you want to round the bottom two corners if it were directional. This one's not a good example because it's not directional. But you're going to round the corners on the long side. And then we are going to adhere these on the outside of our little gift card pocket. What am I doing? Liquid glue. <laughs> and I got gunk all over my glue here. We got a call from um, after school today that Lily, one of her teeth came out. And the way it was described on the phone was that it was one of her adult teeth. So mommy panicked, daddy went and picked her up. It's one of her baby teeth, but they had attached one of her braces to it. So we can't get the wire cut. So the poor girl has this tooth hanging in her mouth with a brace on it attached to a wire. So Brian's taking her to the orthodontist in the morning. It's never a dull moment around here, but she was chewing a piece of gum. So, I mean, we kind of warned her and so did the orthodontist. And what kind of gum? Oh, it was the um, double bubble. I th it's the one that's in the, I'm picturing the wrapper. It's like blue and yellow, the stuff that's really hard to chew. So anyways, <laughs> uh, that might keep her up a little bit tonight or maybe not. She was having fun trying to eat. All right, you're probably seeing how this is going to go together. I'm telling you, it's so, so easy. So we're going to actually create a pocket here, and I'm going to grab tear and tape and my trusty metal ruler. That's on my favorites page as well. I love this thing. And then I'm going to, whoops, tear this off. We tried a fingernail clipper, Lee. Brian did, and we, I think maybe it's where it is. We just can't get the right angle. So we're hoping we can just show up tomorrow and he, they can squeeze us in. <laughs> You'll wait until they can. All right, so I've only done the tear and tape right up to the score line. This is on the side that doesn't have the rounded corners. And then pull the backing off. And then just press it down. And that's creating our little pocket which I'm realizing, let me grab another. <laughs> I have a little stash of gift cards. Pop the gift card in there, that fits perfect. Now, you could do this three inches wide, but you're gonna have, this will be really tight. So I went with three and a half inches wide. And I have already stamped and die cut to save some time this cute little tag. Let me show you how I did it. The sweet little stockings bundle, this is retiring, but look at these little pets, they're so cute. And I'm pretty sure that's a hamster, but probably could also be a guinea pig. <laughs> um, I stamped Very Merry in Cherry Cobbler, and then using the stockings dies, there's this cute little banner die here that I just created a tag. And the trick is when you die cut it, you wanna have the flat, you wanna have the sentiment closer to the right, because we are gonna turn this into a tag. Get this stuff out of the way. All right, then I'm going to grab the eighth of an inch punch or an eighth of a, an inch punch. We don't carry this anymore. Punch a little hole, turning that into a sweet, tiny little tag. And then we're going to use the pool party 
striped grow grain ribbon that goes with the suite. I think this is still available, but I get crazy head looking at the inventory status report these days. Um, let me think this one through because I, I always like to tie this off the roll. Is that going to work? I can't think straight right now. I think it needs to be, I see that, but it's when I'm tying it off the roll that, is that going to be right? I think that's right. Nope. We're going to feed it through the front. The die sheets and envelopes carry in. Um, I'll pop that one up just saw that. So the envelopes come from Amazon. Those are linked on my favorites page. They're Uline. And the magnet cards come from Stampin' Storage, my favorite store. My brain's not working. <laughs> uh, we're going to, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and cut off a piece that's long enough here. And we're going to do, um, <laughs> let my brain's not working. All right. So we're going to do it this way. I'm going to feed the tag through this side. I probably did it the right way the first time. And that doesn't look right. <laughs> Can you show the ribbon up close? Yes to get that to focus it is what width is it well it says one three eighths of an inch so funny how i can't um look at the tag here through the back <laughs> oh see this is what happens when you're running on fumes there we go the ribbon we're going to tie around the top. That's going to keep our, our lid closed or the flap closed. And I'll, I'll move that tag out of the way. And I'm going to use my reverse tweezers to tie the knot here. I've got way more ribbon than I needed, but at some point, if I do a video tutorial for this, I will figure it out. It's like the right brain is not talking to the left brain. Tie a bow there. And then zhuzh. Get those loop de loops zhuzhed in the right size. Where did zhuzh come from? The Fab Five? I think that was Carson that came up with that. But it's really like perfect word for ribbon. <laughs> yeah, the original one, that's right. Oops. Trimming off the ends. And boom, slide the tag over and you have an adorable little gift card holder that is so quick and easy to put together. Again, three and a half by eight and a half, two pieces of two by three designer series paper, and you've got a gift card holder on the fly. I do take the gift cards off the display card, Tilly. Yes, ma'am. Um, because we don't want that to detract from our paper projects, do we? I do that, especially, I feel like the Target gift cards, I get those a lot. They've got the big honking folder gooey <laughs> mess on those. All right, that was gift card holder number four. How are we doing on time? We're doing pretty good. We might, this might be right close to an hour. Five projects. All right, so I'm going to give a shout out to Die Barnes for this project. I'm not going to show it to you yet. Mm, I am going to show it to you. <laughs> It's my favorite one of the bunch is this cute little folder that holds a gift card and she had created a you probably are familiar with it I want to say it was back in 2016 um, a folder to hold um, I think like a set of cards Patty Bennett um, Patty fied it <laughs> as opposed to pixie fied it and she added a little spine to hers so she could fit more cards in the pockets well I completely resized it to fit a gift card so I love this. It's just like, it's a little bit origami-ish. I have done a gift card holder very similar to this, but that was slightly different. I may link to that in this blog post just so you can see the difference, but both were sized to fit a gift card. So the finished dimensions on this is two and a half by three and three quarters. And then I think I forgot to tell you, 
the dimensions on this guy are three and a quarter. Did I do that right? Yeah, three and a quarter by four, okay? All right, so all that you need for this, this is the last one that I designed, so I'm hoping I can remember. This is the, which paper is this? The Christmas Season, I think is the name of this designer series paper. You wanna pick a paper that you love the front and the back. If it is directional, I recommend cutting it in portrait. And so this is cut to seven inches by eight inches, okay? And we bring in the Simply Scored. I'm gonna start with the side that I want to show here on this folded edge, okay? So we're gonna do the score lines for that first. That is gonna be one inch. I'm gonna rotate it 180 and do one inch again. Keeping it on the short side or the seven inch side, I'm gonna flip it and I'm gonna score at three and a half. Okay, so one inch from each side and then three and a half. The one inch ones are on the opposite side or the side that you want folded back. Then I'm gonna turn it to the long side and we are gonna score this at two and one eighth from each side. So two and one eighth and two and one eighth. And now that I say that, it probably should have been on this side because the last one we did was three and a half. So yeah, rotating it to this, two and one eighth. I don't think it really matters, but two and one eighth, Oop, two and one eighth, okay. All right, so these sort of um, branches and berries are going top to bottom here. I'm gonna start by folding on those one inch score lines and burnishing. That's gonna help us see those score lines better. So it's like this, okay. And then I'm gonna open this back up again and I'm gonna fold the corner. I'm folding the corner and I'll bring this up to the camera. I'm folding the corner right up to that one inch score line right there. See that? So basically just like a 45 degree angle and you're gonna do that to all four corners. And I do like to burnish, make sure that that's nice and crisp and flat. Okay, so you've got something that looks like that and we're gonna fold these back over. So basically you folded those corners out of the way, okay? Now I'm questioning myself for some reason. <laughs> I may be cutting another one of these. I think that's right. Yeah, 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 we're good. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is fold then on these score lines. Go figure, the last project I work on, I'm like, duh, cannot remember. All right, so we did this and then we folded on those two and one eighth score lines that we did, okay? I'm gonna tuck one edge into the other. This is like a no cut, no glue gift card holder. Now, if it's gonna fit better the other way, cause you know how paper is, it doesn't always fold just right. You can try it both ways and see which one lays flat. You got a little bit of buckling here, but you can get that just by using your bone folder. I'm gonna go back to the starting point here or where I started. So we're just tucking those in. So what that's done is not only is it gonna hold these pieces together, but it's now created pockets. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is then fold it in half and that was on that three and a half inch score line. I like to make sure that those edges are lined up and then I'm just gonna come in and burnish. We've got lots of layers of paper here. So just take your time and get that all nice and crisp. I'm not being super strong on the paper, but so it's gonna look like this now. The inside pattern is gonna be upside down, but it's gonna be covered by a gift card and a little note card. The outside is gonna be going right side up. How cute is that? Now, I did forget to do something, but the great part of a no cut, no glue is I can take it apart and do that. So on that one inch section, I'm gonna bring in the detailed trio punch because I want a way to tie a ribbon around this. So if you remember, we folded in those corners 
but I want to punch right here in the center on that edge. So I'm going to line up either the score lines on either side. I think you've seen on the detailed trio punch, there's this little center marker there. I'm going to line that up and punch. We're going to do the same thing to the opposite side, making sure that that's unfolded. That's the unfolded edge, centering and punching. All right, so we'll put this back together here. We've got those folded in. Then we fold it down and up, tucked those in. I did that the opposite way again, didn't I? <laughs> Your paper will tell you which way it wants to go and then fold it in half. And so now we've got these little holes here that I am going to tie a ribbon. This was the project that I was looking for the double stitch satin ribbon, which is one of my free gifts. And I realized either I never ordered myself a roll because I know I did it in the ribbon shares or I used it up. I think I might've used it up. Anyway, so we're gonna use another coordinating color, color, this beautiful, soft, succulent, open weave ribbon. And I'm gonna come in from the back. I'm going up and under, I'll bring this up to the camera. So I'm going under and out. Did I do that right? Nope, the front. <laughs> oh. All right, through the front. I'll get this at some point. All right, so like so, okay? Then I'm gonna bring this around and then I'll do what I tried to do the first time, under and out, and I'll show you up close. This is just so we can tie it off the roll. So this is the back, this is the front. And then we are just going to, I did do that backwards, good grief, because I'm used to tying it the other way. All right, we're gonna go trim it again, because my brain, <laughs> I think maybe we tried to do too many projects tonight. No, we are doing great. All right, grabbing my reverse tweezers and tying a knot or a bow. Ooh, I agree with you, Dieta. It is my favorite too. That's why I saved it for last. All right, so I'm gonna hold that and we're gonna tie our bow here. This ribbon is a dream to tie bows with. It's evening evergreen, that's right. What did I say? I probably said something else. <laughs> evening evergreen open weave ribbon. This is that beautiful green in our in colors. Oh, and look what I'm doing. Probably should put the gift card in. <laughs> Oh, hilarious. Grabbing another gift card. All right, so we got a gift card. We put the gift card on one side and a little note card on the other. So the pieces here, we've got basic white that measures two inches by three and a quarter and real red two and a quarter by three and a half. And this is gonna be a little portrait insert and I'm gonna stamp in evening evergreen and this is coming from the uh, peaceful deer stamp set because I was already working with it wishing you a wonderful year and friendships dear There is Cindy um, on my bow tying video you can see that up close I will sh I will try to talk you through it as I do this one you could absolutely use a hole punch for the ribbon, Dieta. Absolutely. What I like about the um, detailed trio punch, well, one, I use it all the time for corner rounding, but then that ribbon slot, it get, puts it at exactly the same spot on either side because of the way there's this little stopper point there. So it punches in exactly the same spot. So you got a little bit of room for a sweet uh, note And then you'll see that the sentiment actually fits. Or you can still see it, I should say. Cute, right? Okay. Now, now we'll tie our bow. <laughs> All right, so I typically, on the left would have been my roll of ribbon. So I put that up and to the left. Then I take this one and go over 
and under and then kind of I kind of twist it like this to pull that into like a plus sign take my reverse tweezers for my third hand and then I bring the loop up okay bring the loop up on the right I bring this one around the left around the front and then I push the loop through and pull it out on the right okay I do have a bow tying video I think I show four ways to tie bows and that is one of them bows are one of those things that uh, you just have to practice 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 and the trick is always to get the bow or to, to you know tie it in a certain way that the loops and the tails don't go all cattywampus on you and that can be a tricky thing to do but there is it's a little bit like making sure you're tying a square knot and that's what gets it right my mama pixie taught me how to tie bows so um, she used to tie bows around um, my brothers and my toy wooden blocks because it was the perfect shape for some of her craft projects lots of great memories watching I mean I can picture her hands making those bows which is awesome all right so this needs a sentiment so I've got a scrap piece of basic white and we're gonna do some fussy cutting here because we want this to be easy peasy so Merry Christmas this is coming from peaceful deer just going to stamp that right in the center of my scrap. And then I'm going to take, let's get the ink out of here before I have an accident. Take my paper snips and I'm just going to cut right along that sentiment on either side. I'm trying to cut as straight as I can with my bare hands. I do miss the classic label punch. It popped up on the clearance rack for a minute and then it was gone. And then I'm going to just cut this at a bit of an angle. I want to cut this at the same parallel angle. We're going to make this a little parallelogram. Here's some geometry for tonight. <laughs> All right, so then grabbing my mini dimensionals. Trina, I have not done that yet. Your question is, have I made? I have seen Rachel Tessman's though, or at least I saw a thumbnail of it and it looks so cool. All right, then I'm just gonna pop that right down on the bottom. Grab a wonderful gem. I'm just gonna pop that right up, just a little bit of hidden bling there. And there we have gift card holder number five, a cute little almost origami pocket style. Thanks to Die Barnes for the idea. I've pixified it to fit a gift card and a little note. All right, so let's bring out all five. Probably should have thought of that before. Is that my crooked one? And show the crooked one. Four. And five. So three that are normal A2 card size. And then two that are just perfect for gift cards. So yay. Thank you for sticking with me. How about we do some prize patrol? All right. For prize patrol. I'm giving away two of the Delicate Dahlia's stamp set. All you have to do to be entered to win is to type in the comments if you are a U.S. resident, hashtag prize patrol. Don't forget the hashtag, no spaces. Make sure you've spelled it correctly to be entered for a chance to win. And I'm going to choose two lucky winners. So while you're doing that, I'm going to just quickly recap. It's the month of December. I've got a host code. We'll automatically apply if you use my shopping code, thepaperpixie.com slash shop. And don't forget to check out the last chance list or the last chance products. Still some great things on the clearance rack. And I will be live again Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time for the January to June 2022 mini catalog sneak peek. Let me go ahead and share my screen. That'll be at 8 o'clock p.m. 
Eastern time. All right, let's share that. Add it to the stream. And let's go ahead and draw. Wow, you guys, 341 of you. I'm gonna pick a drawing. You can still enter to win while it's drawing the first winner. Love seeing your names roll across the screen. We'll have a little party for you and throw some confetti. Valerie McAtee, yay. She is on my team, I'm so excited. I didn't spell, I didn't, I'm like messing up here. Valerie, you don't need to send me your um, mailing address because I have it. Congratulations, Valerie. Let's go ahead and pick winner number two. Drum roll. I feel like we need some music while this rolls, like Jeopardy or Wheel of Fortune. Judy, congratulations. You all need to go buy lottery tickets. <laughs> all right, so to claim your prize patrol, you just want to visit thepaperpixie.com slash prize patrol. Let's go ahead and stop the share there and bring me back on the screen. Congratulations to Valerie and Judy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you all being here. I hope I've helped at least one of you with a last minute gift card holder or a gift card holder to use in the future. I hope you all have a wonderful and blessed weekend and I'm gonna see you Sunday night, 8 p.m. Eastern time for a sneak peek live stream. This will be different. I won't be sharing any projects, but I'll be showing you what you can see in the upcoming January to June 2022 mini catalog. I always love doing the sneak peeks with you. Hope to see you Sunday, and if not, I'll see you next Wednesday for episode 221 of Live with the Paper Pixie. Have a wonderful and blessed weekend, and see you Sunday. Take care. Bye.